Well, thank you, Andy and Jennifer. What comes to mind when you hear the phrase incurable disease? Well, Bill Harris reminds us that we all have an incurable disease, but in the end, there is good news. A cure is not only available, but easily within your reach. Well, Bill, the start of 2015, the start of a new series here in your second week of this uh, month, you're starting a three-part series mm -hmm. uh, talking about the cross and how it is the cure for sin or the curse, curse as you put it. Yeah. Um, and so, it's rather fitting to start a new year that we take a look really at the the basis, the foundation of our belief in Christ. Yeah, and, and the foundation is that man is in trouble without Christ. And this is why he had to come into the world. And I really love the fact that scripture tells us that even before the foundation of the world was laid, it was already conceived in the mind of God that he would dispatch his son to mm. get us out of trouble. We have, we've had an incurable disease and it is a disease of sin that leads to all kinds of detriment. And you see it played out in the daily drama of life, even in the headlines of the news every day. Yeah. Um, and with that, we know that it's going to continue on and on and on. The only thing that breaks that cycle of sin, that cures the terminal disease, is the blood of Jesus. Hmm. So the curse of sin, where did that start? How did uh, mankind as a whole have this curse uh, really laid down on them? You know, the, the, the origin of it really began with with Lucifer when Satan was known as yeah. Lucifer and that was before time ever began. Nobody fully understands how sin began in him. But when he was kicked out of heaven, he came down to earth and spread this terminal disease, this horrible disease to Adam and Eve. Hmm. And the interesting thing about sin is sin has a nature that when it gets to be a part of you, it can pass on to all of mankind. Hmm. We had nothing to do with Adam and Eve's choice yeah. in the Garden of Eden to sin, but we are still victims. Christ came as Dr. Jesus hmm. to really heal us from that incurable disease. Well, what about the, the common belief that a lot of people hold that, you know, as, as people, as a whole, we're not exactly bad. Maybe there's not a lot of us yeah. that are, are out there killing people. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to deceive people. We're yeah. not doing these, these terrible things. So why, why are we bad? Why are we still under the curse or how are we still under the curse? That is the operative question. People ask that all the time. We must understand, and I said this in one of the programs, from the time you're born to the time you die, even if you never commit one sin, there is the nature of sin in you from mm -hmm. Adam and Eve. That in, in itself is a condemning effect of sin. Yeah. And it is important to have Jesus Christ as the head of your life. With all that Christ suffered and died, God is not, allowed, is not about to allow us to go around Jesus Christ to get to him. Hmm. This is why Christ said, um, the only way you can get to my father is through me. Right. You see? So that's why it doesn't matter that we are people who may not have done anything wrong. We treat our neighbor right. There's a sin factor in all of us without Christ. So I hear you, you keep going back to that fact that, that Christ is the single way that we resolve this curse. Yes. Why is that? Why, again, going back to that, if, if, I'm someone who is good, and of course we, we're going to sin no matter what, mm -hmm. but why are my good deeds not enough to take care of that curse? It is because the nature of sin in humankind is such that it can never appease God. Hmm. You can never do enough. You can never sing in the choir enough. You can never give them <laughs> enough money in the offering fan, yeah. whatever. It takes the righteousness of Christ so that when God looks upon us, even though we're still finite beings and still subject to sin, when he looks on us and sees Christ, then he is appeased. And then all of a sudden, it doesn't matter that we were sinful. Hmm. He now sees his son in us. That's why Jesus is the only way. Okay, so he's the only way. And if we choose to believe that, how, how does that work? How do we um, appease God when he looks upon our sin through Christ? What do we do? Well, we, first of all, we accept him as our Lord and Savior. And that means that our spirit man on the inside, which was dead to sin and insensitive to God, becomes alive and sensitive to God. Now we want God in our lives, directing our lives day mm -hmm. to day. And that means that the blood of Jesus not only washes away the sins, God forgives us of our sins, and we now have an infusion of eternal life rather than eternal death. Okay. And so when we look at um, what happened in that initial point of the curse that causes us not to be enough to appease God, that we need to rely on Jesus. You go through um, kind of three things that they did not want to do once God gave them over as mankind. They don't want to approve God. They don't want to recognize yeah. God. 
and they don't want to acknowledge God. Is that the source of, of our sin coming yeah. out in us? That, that's, that's the core. I think that's the crux of the whole matter. And when we acknowledge God by way of his son, Jesus Christ, it opens up a whole avenue of life's opportunities in this world and in the world to come. We'll hear from Bill later this month on Faith and Friends. But in the meantime, plan to watch his show, Update with Bill Harris, for a full 30 minutes on the topics we just discussed. Update with Bill Harris airs here on TV44 Thursdays at 9 a.m. and Sundays at 1.30. Mark.